Hello, everyone, and welcome to another showcase mission of the upcoming Horidor campaign for the DCS Fokkerwolf 190A8. This campaign has been produced by Reflected Simulations, and the mission we're about to fly is in about the middle of the campaign, and it's a bomber intercept mission. Let's start the mission. We'll listen to the briefing and then we'll get airborne. Meine Herren, wir haben Arbeit vor uns. Eine große Bomberformation hat gerade Saarbrücken dem Erdboden gleich gemacht und jetzt kommen sie in unsere Richtung. Bemannt eure Maschinen und macht sie startklar. Ich werde über dem Flugfeld kreisen, bis wir uns gruppiert haben und Valhalla wird uns Vektoren für den Abfangkurs übermitteln. Beeilt euch, los geht's! There's the audio briefing, so we're going to get some power to this engine or this aircraft, some electric power from the ground crew. Unfortunately, we have the modern voices we have to put up with for a second here. Ground power is now on. Ground power is on. Just a quick check of our loadout. We've got the rockets either side. These are the Werfergranate. And then we've got a fuel tank down the center line. So I'm probably going to try and burn through that fuel first if I can let's go through some electrics now that we've got power should be doing this relatively quickly because we do have bombers approaching that we need to intercept throttle to idle I'll put some prime fuel into the engine pumping that a few times it's quite cold air temperature on the map is Still a bit buggy. Fuel on. We are good to start. We'll get the um, clear prop audio in just a second, which I quite like. Warschau, propeller dreht. Good. No troopies running around in front. There we go. Ticking over. I need to set about 1,000 to 1,100 RPM just quickly so we don't shake the engine to pieces there we go nice smooth running rpm get some electrics turned on what remains anyway i'm going to turn on the auxiliary tank and then we'll turn off the forward tanks in a moment once i'm confident that enough fuel is flowing through everything else can be turned on here except for the kennlichter the identification lights power to the gun systems and now we will turn on the first set of guns looking for the red lights one two three four second set of guns one two good flaps to the takeoff position so setting those listening as the flaps retract up into the takeoff position now I'm going to turn off the forward and rear fuel tanks, which is the main internal tanks. Get some oxygen flowing into the cockpit, which we're going to need. I won't turn the grenade launcher power on, and I won't turn off the weapon safety just yet. We are good to taxi. Let's close this canopy. I'm going to taxi to the right the windsock and the threshold is over there just a quick check for anyone walking in front or driving in front stick back ah one thing we need to do before we move forward is turn off that ground power something i almost always forget and then they start yelling at you they should just remove the ground power unit as soon as the engine kicks over that should just be happening automatically shouldn't have to radio across the field back to the dispersal hut or wherever the nearest radio is it should all happen automatically and smoothly or it should just be done via hand signals and pilot should just hand signal the ground crew that's just the problem with DCS being originally built for the jets is that a lot of these aspects still haven't been adapted for the World War II environment We'll have a little bit more of a chat about that in a moment once we see the airfield from above. 
quite a few lovely object placements that Reflected has put in this mission. You've got um, covered trucks, yeah, static aircraft parked around the place, fuel drums, Wehrmacht troopies walking around. It's all very, very well done. It's done a great job of making these airfields come alive. Checking the airspace, no one there. Going to get airborne pretty quickly. You can see I've got wingmen already taxiing around, so I'll get airborne, make plenty of space for them to get airborne as well. Channel 2 on the radio is set. There's the green flare coming up from the control hut or the control tower. Okay, just get lined up here. Uh, we'll just center the view a bit better. Right, so now we're lined up. Stick fully back. Throttle on. It's quite a run with the extra fuel in the external tank. We're airborne. I'm just fighting with the aeroplane a little bit here. Gear up. I've got a message. Gear indicator lights are up. I've got a message to orbit the airfield and wait for the squadron to take off. And I'm soon going to bring the flaps up also to the normal flight. Which I will do at 300 or so. Let's do that now. Nose is going to want to drop, so I just have to hold it back a bit. There's the nose drop. The aircraft's just skidding across a little. Okay. We can now climb. Back to about 1.3 RTO or 1.28 to 1.3 ish thereabouts. Um, the guns. Um, the rockets. Everything's armed. And we'll wait for instructions to see where it is we're flying to. I'm going to try and gain. One and a half thousand meters, maybe. So the airfield here, you can see these concrete parking areas, these circular parking areas, and these enormous long concrete runways. Unfortunately, this is all post World War II NATO construction. If you look at aerial photos of the site from the 1950s and 60s, you'll see all these circular pads and these very large runways. This did not exist during World War II. World War II photos of the site show a very different story indeed. A much smaller set of apron and runway areas, and I think perhaps that actually there is the Second World War runway. And you can see the old kind of arrangement underneath the NATO stuff. So this is one of the errors, unfortunately, on this recently released channel map. It seems that the map builders have relied on modern tools to build this map, that is modern base data. And the same applies to a number of the urban areas where they've actually built up the map as though it were the 1960s or even later. Which is a bit of a shame because it's an incredibly beautiful map. It's, it's very detailed and looks wonderful but it's just not historically accurate. But enough about that, let's focus on the mission, which is why we're here. So we're passing through 1,200 meters now, still in a right-hand orbit. I've got visual on someone just getting airborne. Someone else is just at the threshold, and there's at least a couple more taxiing still. So it could be a while before we get away from the field. I will continue to climb then. Let's use this opportunity to gain plenty of altitude because if we're intercepting bombers, they could be way up. Got good forward airspeed. 
still climbing in a right hand turn waiting for everybody how many more have we got to go one is getting airborne three are still taxiing so we might get up to 2500 meters by the time everyone's airborne that's pretty good i'll take that because i'd quite like to have a good stack of air underneath me before we head out to where the bombers are supposed to be obviously being so high so early in the mission does mean that the AI are going to be struggling down there below me to get up to altitude I don't see any of my wingmen immediately so not even my section has formed up with me yet just shows you how long this is going to take there we are, 2,200. I do have aircraft flying underneath me, which is good to see. And I think that's it for the chaps getting airborne. One more rolling now. The last one. There he is down there, getting airborne. That's the last aircraft. I don't see any more on the taxiways. And there's a whole lot of aircraft going around in orbit down there trying to climb up to me coming up 2400 meters Here we go. Press spacebar to check in with Valhalla Control. Good idea. Flieg direkt nach Lille. Steigen auf 7,000 meter. Okay, that's climbing to 7,000 meters. We're going to turn on to 090, so due east. I'm going to look for the coast. There it is. So due east is going to be that way pretty much. And Lille is not actually terribly far away from here. So I don't think we have a terribly long distance to go. Climbing up to 7,000 feet in the short space available, though, is going to be very difficult. Still over the airfield though, at very low ATA. I'm going to pump that now. And I'm going to roll out on what I think is close to an easterly heading. There goes the blower, extra engine power. We are at 3,000 meters, so I've got to climb 4,000 more on an easterly heading. And hope like hell that my wingman can follow me they are really going to struggle so I'm going to go with moderate RTA and just really push the nose up hope that they can catch up to me I'm also very tempted to dump my external tank Lille is not a long flight enemy apparently are coming in from Saarbrücken which is probably southeast or east southeast from here. Vespa is also airborne, 12109s. So the Vespa formation is also being told to climb to 7,000 meters for an intercept. They're heading 210, which means they are going to be northeast of the RV point or the, the hold point. So they're probably up in that direction somewhere. What's my heading? I'm a bit south of east. I'm going to turn back, see if I got sight of Lille 
anywhere. I'm looking for a large city. Ah, I've got some smoke down there with a large city. That's probably Lille. It's not actually marked on the map. Not all the towns have been uh, marked on this channel map. So navigating isn't the easiest of tasks. And I'm hoping that that is a marker that Reflected has put there just to help visually identify where Lille is. As you can see, it's quite close. I think if we were down at a thousand meters still when we left the airfield, we would really struggle to get up to altitude before we got to that location. Looking for my wingman, nothing on the right, nothing on the left. I'll put a call out for my flight to rejoin. We'll see if we get hold of them. Throttle back and pull the nose up. Approaching 4,000. Carrying these rockets and the extra fuel tank really does make climbing difficult. Looks like we're drawing possibly from the other tanks now. So I'm going to turn on the power to the main fuel tanks and I'm going to jettison the centerline tank. I'm a bit surprised that we appear to be drawing fuel from the other tanks, but that's alright. Rear tank is full, forward tank is mostly full. I'm going to close off the forward tank so that we're only drawing from the rear and I'll just put the fuel gauge on the rear tank so I see how much fuel we've got there and now I'm going to release the center line external tank. Tank is away. I see my wingman now. There they are. They've actually got a bit of height on me too. That's very good news. Which means they can now close. Let's see if I can see Lille up ahead. Yeah, there it is. What's our height? Still 4,000. Ugh. We just don't have the altitude. Let's climb really heavy now. Now that my wingmen are with me. Four and a half thousand. Tempted to really push the throttle forward. Let's go for it. Come on, lads. Just short of full throttle. Climbing at 285, 290 kilometers per hour, which I think is pretty close to max climb rate. Probably going to leave my wingman behind again. I'm a bit far south of where I need to be heading. Let's come left a bit again. That's not Lille down there, is it? I hope not should be at over there. Oh, I'm not entirely sure. We might be over Lille already. Gotta look for that smoke that I saw earlier. There it is. Okay. That's Lille. I'm not happy with our altitude though. Still only at 5,000 meters. Got 2,000 more to go.
are just not climbing at all. More throttle. Push, push, push. Push this thing up the hill. 5,700, full throttle now. There's nothing left that I can do apart from try and trim. Six thousand meters. Okay, we're a thousand below our target altitude, and our RV is just off to the left, I think. So we're going to turn left shortly. I want to just gain this last a thousand meters as we approach the RV. I'm going to do a right-hand turn, and then go all the way around two seventy in a right turn. There goes my climb rate. This is also going to help my wingman hopefully catch up a little bit. That's good. Very gentle right hand climbing turn. Got some good airspeed now. I've started contrailing because it's so cold. Three hundred and forty kph indicated airspeed, which is absolutely fine. I can afford to give a bit of that up by bringing the nose up a fraction. Six thousand three hundred meters now. Looking back for my wingman, I don't see them contrailing just yet. But there's the RV. Oh yeah, I see wingman below me. They are sort of making their way up. And there's the RV over there. So once I roll out on a northerly heading, I'm going to head straight for Lille. And hopefully then we can check in on station 6500 okay i'm much more confident now that we can grab this last bit of altitude that we need got wingmen flying underneath me in a pair. They've still got their external fuel tanks attached. And the other sections are now contrailing as well. As we climb through 6,700 meters. Okay, I think we've done it. I think we can be a bit more confident that we're on altitude. We're going to head due north. This should place us over Lille. I'm going to have to waggle around a bit just to make sure that we are on target because I can't actually see the city itself when I'm flying directly over it. Looks like the heading I want is 020, so I'm just going to hold that. Throttling back now. Just a couple of hundred meters too low. Bring the nose out. Got visual on all the wingmen starting to slowly gather behind me. Oh, it's hard to tell which one Leela is. That's a fairly big town over there with a series of canals in the middle of it. Underneath me is the edge of the map, which I'm pretty sure I should not be flying over, so I'm going to go left down here and fly over the center of that town, in case there happens to be Lille. Seven thousand two hundred, seven thousand three hundred meters. I've got plenty of altitude. So we're on station altitude wise. We're just not in the right location.
this second turn here gives my formation another chance to catch up and you can see them all here a section of four down low a section of four at the back and three at the top that'll be my section so the Schwärme are now all shaking out the ganze Jagdschwader is here Time to roll out on this heading. This should take me directly over Lille. Pretty sure it's underneath me. Like I said earlier, it's very hard to tell where you are when you've got so much altitude because the aircraft just obscures so much of the landscape. Now I'm starting to get a little bit worried. That's got to be Lille. It's such a big town. I've just flown right over the top of it. Let's just orbit here then. I'm going to have to take a look at the map. As you can see, there's no mention of a city called Lille out here. It's It could be this one, it could be that one. I don't know which one Lille is. Maybe it's the second one, a bit further down, a bit further south. There's the, maybe it's that one over there. What I'll do is I'll just fly in that direction so at least we've covered off both of these large cities. That second one is closer to 090 from where we, we got airborne. So perhaps that's Lille. What I'll do is I'll roll out on the heading for that one. We've got plenty of altitude. We're definitely at the right RV altitude. 
Now I'll point in this direction. And like I said earlier, we don't really know when we're over top of it because we can't see. So I just have to hold this heading for a few moments, 30 seconds to a minute or so, hoping that we overfly the town. And that uh, we can send a signal that we're over the RV. Excellent. Although I'm already at... I'm already at 7,000 metres. So it looks like um, it looks like the mission anticipates that you won't yet be at 7,000 metres when you get here. But due to my insistence on climbing early, I'm already at altitude which is good so now we've just got to orbit here and wait for the four motors as it says I'm pretty sure that should say four engines to arrive I'm going to go into a right hand orbit both tanks now on the fuel rockets are armed Guns have power, gun safety is off. Adler unit are attacking. Whoever they are. These are my boys swinging into position. That looks really good, that Schwarm on the right there. Forty-sevens. Adler are engaging them. Seven thousand five hundred meters, nearly here. I need more Arta. Down at one point. One point zero. One point one. We'll go with one point two five-ish. It's the coast up ahead. couple of little stutters there. Oh, hello. Large, large formations. Two of them. Okay. Well, the enemy aircraft have arrived. Okay, my tanks are, are away already. I'm just going to confirm that by pressing again. We'll go with um, second element. Engage. Bandits. Flight, I'm just to make sure everyone gets the instruction. Engage bandits. There is the scrap over there. I've got a formation of B-17s on the right and another formation on the left. I'm going to aim for the ones on their left, that's our right, and do a head-on attack. This is pretty much the only way to uh, attack B-17 formations. Full throttle. I see the escorts up behind. There's at least four. Let's climb, try and get in a position to make a head-on attack. Everybody's swinging in here. I think I'm nearly out in front now. Wow, look at this chaos. Two bomber streams crossing each other here. That is really, really dangerous. We're about to roll in for a head-on attack. I'll signal my flight again to engage as we get, hopefully, within attacking range. So, rockets first. I'm 
Here we go. The attack begins. From dead head on. Got to single out a bomber. Try and get him with rockets. Now they, the rockets fire quite high. So I'm going to try and release them both on this group of three bombers that's dead ahead of me here. And you've got to get quite close. The rockets don't have a long range. Jeez, this is insanity. Okay, let's go one, two, and firing through as we go up. And over the top. I have no idea if we hit anything there. Checking for P-47s. Okay, I'm going to make another run through the formation here. I've got a bomber just in front of me, clear behind. We'll nose up onto this guy as we go back through. Bit unstable. He's out, breaking away from the formation. Bomber's going down. Clear behind. I've got one bomber that's just breaking off the formation. He's a bit loose and a bit alone. I've got some fighters behind. I'm going to signal my guys to attack again. Flight, engage, bandits. Okay, they're attacking now. Wow, look at this behind. Escort fighters. Okay, let's try and make another attack here if we can. We've got a strafing or a slashing attack opportunity here. Clear behind. A lot of parachutes in the air. He's on fire. Another B-17 down, breaking off the formation. As frame rates start to take a tumble, you're going to need a really, really beastly system to run this mission in its entirety. I've got B-17s falling out behind me. Look at that one there. Rolling down out of the sky. Parachutes everywhere. And here come the fighters. I'm about to be engaged by some P-47s. So, it's time for me to... basically leave those bombers behind I think yeah this P-47 is coming straight at me pretty sure it's a P-47 yep not sure if I got any hits on him there I think that was all misses not enough deflection that's a friendly diving away, I think. Gosh, it's hard to tell. And here's this P-47 that I just engaged. I'm going to try and roll up over him now. Losing sight of him through all the contrails. Uh, this might be a one-on-one -on -one that drops down to low altitudes. Lost sight of him. Yep. No sign of that guy. There he is up above me. I'll turn back on him here. Got to bring this aeroplane around gently. So it looks like the two of us now are in a duel. I'll let him go. Just keep turning around on him. Second fighter, possibly a third. Looks like I might actually have an advantage on this chap now. Adler are returning to base. Ah, uh, I've got six. I've got a P-47 with me. Two P-47s now. 
he's firing. I'm hit. Time to get out of here. Yep, touched on the wing. He's still on me. There he is. Just gonna throttle back, see if I can get him to overshoot and drop on him. Looks clear behind. Get the nose up. Oh, that, oh, it's a spitty. Wow, this is not a P47. I'm getting shot at, I think, from behind. Yeah, I've got one P P47, possibly, and one Spitfire with me. That's a Thunderbolt there, I'm 90% sure. Although it's got the invasion stripes. Gosh, it's hard to tell what that is. Keep your speed up. He's getting around behind me, so is this one. P47. Defo. Second P47. These guys are very, very keen to see me go in. Chasing me all the way down here. See if I can get my wingman to cover me. I don't know where he is. Okay, I'm running out of... I'm running out of aircraft capacity here. Yell at my wingman, try and get him to... Right, he says he's coming back. Uh-oh. P-47's closing on my six. Time for another rolling maneuver. One's shooting at me. Break and get low. Two of them right behind me here. Right, time to deploy a little bit of combat flap. Or landing flap. Let's see if I can just outturn them now. These guys are really good at turning. Re relax the flap now. Gain some airspeed, flap back on. Pull the nose up, try and get around. Okay, there's two of them above me. Now I'm getting an advantage in the turn at last. I'm gonna go after the second one over here. Up he goes. He's got his mate out in front of him as well. Might be able to get hits on him. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna ignore him for now. Oh shit, two more P-47s. One. Two. Three. Maybe three more. Time to get out of here. There's that smoke. Oh, I've got one P-47 on my right wing just about to overfly me. I'm just going to have to try and make life difficult for him. And I'm going to get into the weeds. Hopefully that means my wingmen are arriving. Flight. Cover me, cover me. Ah, I gotta use the mouse for this. Okay, try and get my boys here. There's an aircraft off to my left, slightly higher. It looks like he's trying to line up for an attack run on me. He's the only bandit here right now. The other ones have seemingly moved away. Okay, he's on my right, left high. I'm gonna put a little bit of flap in, try and bring the airplane around rapidly. Aircraft in front, sheesh. That's uh, 50 cal tracers going overhead. 
Okay, there's at least two of them still here with me. Precious little in the way of flat coming up. What's my heading? East again. I need to go north or west. Time to get a bit of a look around. Oh, right behind me. Come on, where are my wingmen? I need you guys. One on my six, closing very rapidly. Just try and stay so low to present as little opportunity for them to shoot as possible. Still on my six. I've got this other guy on my left though, which is interesting. I wonder if I can swing onto him. Oh, perhaps not. Just try and get a bit closer, see if I can get underneath him. Let's go left. Looking around when you're this low is really tough. I've got a contact at 12 o'clock. Two contacts at 12 o'clock. I really hope there's friendly fighters up ahead. Here we go. I think I'm dragging these guys under some friendly fighters. Look at this. Oh, it's all parachutes. Some fighters. Some fighters. Oh, please. Please do not be P-47s. Yeah, I've got gunfire. There's definitely a scrap up here. All I gotta do is drag these guys. Oh, he's still right on my six. He just quite, can't quite catch me. Just out of guns range. I'm dragging these guys underneath the scrap. A lot of friendlies firing up here. This was real lucky. Boom. Right, come on guys. One of the enemy aircraft is breaking off. We're in some flak now too. Square wings, German square wings. Here we go. I've got a bit of aggression happening from these guys now. Yes, that's what I want to hear. Engaging bandits. Beautiful. I think I'm saved. There's a P-47. Turning. Running out of airspeed too. I'm a sitting duck here for a second. So is he. See you later. Thunderbolt. He's bailed out. That was nice. There's a lot of low level flak bursting right behind me. I think we've cleared the airspace. What's that? Friendly, that's another Anton. Ah, another P-47 right in front of me over here. Yeah, I see him, I see him. That's it. Keep turning, keep turning. Okay, power on. Hopefully he just keeps on that turn. I'm going to aim just underneath him. Wait for him to run out of airspeed. He's going over me. Okay, I'm on him here. I think one of my wingmen will probably get him too. There's a lot of German aircraft in this space. This poor guy's on his own now. And he's quite slow. Quick check behind. Bit of combat flat just to lose some of this airspeed. Too close. I think I'm down to just my second pack of two guns. Oh, I should have this guy though. Yeah, he's really slow. I think he's damaged already. It's not a good look for him.
breaking off. That's way too dangerous. Let's make another attack. Parachutes falling out of the sky in all directions. He's going back into the same maneuver. Power off, power off, power off, power off. Okay, better power on, power on. Wow, he's really slow. That's a sick aeroplane. Yeah. I think I would just bail out if I was you, buddy. There's something wrong with that aeroplane of yours. I can just sit underneath him. He's trying to... Oh, in comes a friendly. There we go. Not sure who got him then. Some friendly shoulder shooting, but that was a sick aeroplane for quite some time. Let's get out of here. I'm 90% sure that the airspace is clear. Very low on fuel. Yeah, just enough fuel to RTB. Throttling right back. Huge number of parachutes in the air. It's just madness. I'm going to hit about 270 from here, which should take us towards home field. Signal the guys to all rejoin. Make sure the flaps are in the up position. There's a few fighters way up high. Possibly returning to base, unsure what they are. More parachutes. Those B-17s got mauled. You can see my compass is toppled and is pretty much useless. There's my fuel state. I'm glad my wingmen all survived. That was really impressive. And it was very fortuitous of me to find them again. There's the airfield. I'm going to run straight in from here. There's an airfield. I don't actually know if that is near there, but it looks like it from this angle. Gonna start throttling back already. I think those P-47s should have probably broken off a lot earlier. Once they drop down to, you know, a certain altitude or a certain distance from the bombers, I would expect them to kind of break off and go as fast as possible back towards home and then only react if they you know have an enemy aircraft within say 300 meters just going to a kind of break and then dive away again but the AI behavior is really tricky it's always going to be difficult to get AI to not only read the immediate situation around them but then to also read the overall mission objectives and know what they should be doing and react accordingly it's a pretty complex set of instructions they have to be given and a series of reactions they have to pick from. Right, we're really fast. I can afford to throw it right back. I'm going to shove in just combat level flat. Just going to help me slow up. Press I button to check in with Valhalla. Space by rather. Verstanden. Good. That's my bad heim. Six hundred meter. My wingman. Okay, I'm going to get my guys to um, loose formation. I think formation. Trail. Yeah, I don't want you behind me, mate. So, final approach now. Canopy can be opened. Or not. 
flaps fully down now. Just make sure I get the green lights when the gear goes down. Still aircraft is stable with the flaps down, which is good news. Gear going down now. Gear lights are showing. Also good news. There's either a strong crosswind or I have a damaged aeroplane. Because this thing is cramming to the right like nobody's business. I'm aiming way off to the left. This is going to be a tricky landing. A huge crosswind here. Oh yeah, you can see the the wind socks pointing a little bit crosswind like but not as bad as what it feels like 200 a little bit fast but I'm gonna have to manage this onto the deck now front wheels down little bounce oh, we're down not a bad landing okay I'm just gonna get rid of this radio because I don't need to hear those AI wingmen now they go a bit mental when you land they don't really know what they're doing Okay, don't want to drop that nose and dig in, so I'm just braking very gently. I've got the stick fully back and I'm just touching the brakes. But you can see the nose is really, really punching in. And here we are. Taxi off to the grass. I'm not going to taxi all around the field. This is one for the ground crews to fix up. As soon as I get over here I'm bringing this aeroplane to a halt. Even now if I push the brakes on too much the nose will dig in. You've got to be so so tentative. I'm just very very gently pushing the foot brakes and I'm trying to apply both brakes with the same amount of pressure so we don't go sideways. Very difficult. Flaps to the up position. And we'll cut the fuel flow. Mag 1, Mag 2 off. There we are. Ground fire going up. So one of those enemy aircraft has actually followed us all the way back here to our home base. That is a P-51 that's dropped in. That's probably those high altitude ones we saw before. So I think the mission might just need a little bit of tweaking to make sure that doesn't happen because um, there's no way those high altitude interceptors, if that's what they were, would then drop down and, and have a look at us at our airfield. Yeah. <laughs> All sorts of flat going off, burning aeroplanes. There's probably a couple more victories to be had here if I was um, still had fuel and had ammo and wasn't damaged, but that's not the case. So we're going to call it a mission. Quick little look at the scores then. For some reason I've been awarded the American Distinguished Flying Cross for my efforts today. No idea why that happened. I was credited with five victories. So I'm guessing two B-17s and three P-47s. Not a bad haul for this Anton pilot. That's it for showcasing the... Holidor campaign, just two missions from the campaign flown, one close to the start and one in the middle. Very enjoyable, it's been really well put together, very thoughtfully made, and with some excellent voice work from the playing community as well. So thanks to Reflected Simulations for allowing me to fly these missions before release. This campaign will be up on the Eagle Dynamics shop, hopefully September, but maybe sometime afterwards. Not exactly sure when this will be available for purchase, but look out for it. I'll stick a link to the Reflected Simulations Facebook on the video description below for anyone who wants to keep an eye on what he's up to. As usual, everyone, happy hunting. I will see you up there.